Hey everyone, so we're here at the Children's Museum in Naples, Florida, and today is Biology Day. It's December 28th, 2013, so why don't you come along with me so we can go inside and learn more information about what Biology Day is all about. Alright, Lily, now we can talk a little bit more about the events going on today, Biology Day. So can you tell us what is the main concept of that? The main concept of Biology Day is getting the kids the opportunity to check out all these different elements of biology. We are an ecological state. We really focus on our wonderful wetlands, our estuaries, our fantastic habitats because Florida is very diverse. We have things like the Florida panther and the, ba the black bear that are our two widest ranging animals in Florida. They go all the way up from the Keys all the way up to Georgia. Um, and then we have birds, we have every kind of animal migrating to us. So we really want to let the kids see those things. Uh, today we have everything from fossils and shark's teeth with Zach Dale, a wonderful teenager that knows everything you can know about paleontology. Downstairs working with the kids with his fantastic fossils, he's letting them pick them up and experiment with them a little bit. Uh, we have Rookery Bay, Ding Darling, we have the Florida Department of Environmental Protection and the Florida Fish and Wildlife. Uh, we have Trooper the Blind Raccoon, Shy Wolf Sanctuary, uh, Gallivanting Gavin with Orange Sheep Tours with his tortoises today. Um, uh, let's see, the Wonder Gardens. The Wonder Gardens just recently opened back up and have renovated the entire site. Um, myself growing up, they had begun to really work with mammals and not have them in the best conditions. And so they've gone back through the entire site and re-engineered it and reopened it to have mainly reptiles, birds, and flora and fauna, and do educational programs off of that in a very clean, purely educational environment that is benefiting the animals. Um, so we're able to let the kids see how these organizations operate, the actual animals and plants that they work with, let the kids get their hands on these. I mean, how often do you get to say, I got kissed by a wolf today? Not often. Now, of course, you mentioned a lot of people that come here, come to the different events. Who are the people? Can you tell us about the businesses that partner up with the museum? How does the museum get in contact with them? How do they exactly partner up, and what events do they usually attend? Mm -hmm. We get the benefit of going out to many different events. Uh, the Equine Center's big festival, the Panther Festival, uh, to many different outreach events, or just where we're around on the town ourselves and say, hey, I really like what you're doing. Um, may I have your card and can we follow up with you? Uh, we've managed to make a lot of great partners through those actions and brought them into the museum. What we typically do is invite them in, see if they'd like to put up a table and talk to kids about what they do, interact with them, bring in whatever elements of business they are, and uh, see how that works. Sometimes we get to do programming off of that as well, where they get to put on a huge presentation where they have the classrooms like Orange Sheep Tours, Gallivant and Gavin. Um, Shy Wolf has done that before as well. Or uh, they can actually do a classroom where they get to like train an animal. The Paws organization, which is a nonprofit as well. They train dogs as service members for children or for veterans only. They've come in here and actually been able to conduct a class teaching kids how to train service dogs, and the kids did fantastically with that. They did a really great job. Now, do you try to do the same events each year, or do you try to, can you tell us a little bit about that? Do you look for the weaknesses in some of them that didn't work and try to fix them in certain ways to make them better the next year? We certainly do. Since we have been open not even two years so far, mm -hmm. we have been playing around with as many events as we possibly could to see what works and what doesn't work. We've had a lot of great successes and we figured out some key components for the upcoming years. Um, Biology Day we did last year and this year we made even bigger. Next year I want to make it even bigger than that. We want to make it a huge festival. We're looking at even expanding into the parking lot next year and uh, we'll probably be reaching out to organizations next month for next year so that we have everyone booked up way in advance. We can have more plant organizations. We can have um, microbiology in an in, in even bigger force. Um, 
We have things like Biology Day. We have Family Fun Day that we just got done with uh, in November. We just got to try out Veterans Day in November. That was a great success, and we're going to do it even bigger next year. We had Marines out doing a kitty boot camp. We had a fantastic flag retirement ceremony with the Eagle Scouts. Um, Upcoming, we have our Founders Day in February. That will be a nice come on birthday party uh, celebrating our second year. And uh, coming up in the summer, we have our summer camps again that were a huge hit last year. In fact, we even have a few specific summer camps that are the best of come on. So we're definitely focusing on what we have done fantastically well and what we can do even better. All right, well, thank you. You've been very patient. Thank you very much. You should, <laughs> you should get back to work. There's a lot of kids downstairs. There's a lot of events going on. So we're going to go ahead and head down there. You can come along with me, and we're going to look at some of the businesses that are set up downstairs. And some of the cool animals. Mm -hmm. Oh, the animals. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. We'll All right, see you so later. in the first part of our tour, walking around to the different animal exhibits, we're here with Dot and also Trooper. So, Dot, can you tell us a little bit about Trooper? Yes, I'd like to. Trooper is four and a half years old. He is a raccoon. He is damaged um, and is unable to see, smell, climb, or feed himself because he was um, abused when he was eight weeks old. Um, a man hit him in the head with a golf club. I'm a licensed wildlife rehabilitator and I was called to come and take him, which I did, and spent a long hard time in the process to get him to function such as walk again um, and actually run it took two years of retraining his brain to get him to run again it, it took me three and a half months of water therapy just to get him to stand so he could walk it three years to get him to actually lap water he couldn't use his tongue but he now laps water he is used for educational purposes we have written a book about his story and his rehab and of course our main part which is the educational part is all about how we would like the public to to treat all our, our wildlife and to respect and protect not only wildlife but all life and that's what our mission is now why are you today here uh, like what event are you here for why are you here with trooper and what do you hope to teach the children Okay, um, we were very fortunate to be asked by Galasano's Muse Children's Museum to come today so that we can um, show them and they can experience a, the beauty of the raccoon and listen to some wonderful things about raccoons such as their beautiful hands, um, what they eat, how to approach them or not to approach them in the wild because that's one of our main things that we do talk to them about is never never touch any animal unless you ask first so when the children come up to us we always remind them they must act ask first before they touch any animal plus we also tell them that we shake hands even the president of the united states shakes hands you don't just walk up to anyone and put your hands all over them out of respect you take his hand and shake it and this way the animals are safe and so are the children and they actually get to shake hands with him All right, well that's an amazing story both on troopers part and of course the society's part hopefully in the future we can come back and we can learn more information about your own society but we're going to be continuing to tour around to the different areas which actually have animals and animal skins and all that stuff thank you very much doc thank you thank you Thank you. Stay tuned, and we'll see you All right, later. All right, so our next stop, they're actually going to leave, but this is Sue, and she actually bring. can you tell us his name one more time? Chief. Chief. This is Chief. He's a wolf dog. He's about four years old, and he loves attention. So can you tell us a little bit about your organization and what you're hoping to gain from a lot of the kids, a lot of the children today? Well, at Shy Wolf, we're very focused on education. So that's the big thing. We want to teach people about uh, good pet ownership, which animals you should and shouldn't own, and also uh, teach you about wolves, that they're not big, bad creatures that blow your house down. They're very shy and they're very timid, and they love our attention. Now, do you have any grasp of how you originally got partnered up with the Children's Museum? Um, the Children's, some of the volunteers from the Children's Museum came out to Shy Wolf to volunteer for the day, mm -hmm. and that's how we hooked up, and it was a wonderful relationship that will Hopefully that will continue for years to come.
Now, are there any other events that you plan on coming maybe with? We, we try to get out to most all events in, in the county whenever mm -hmm. it's going on. And Chief is our ambassador. He's a wonderful, he's good with everybody. Uh, but sometimes we'll bring other animals out too. Well, we're going to try to get more in contact with you. You're going to try to hook up so that we can have more of a longer interview so you can talk about the different animals that are in your society. We'd love to have you come out and show you all the different animals yeah. and, and have you go in and get kissed by a very real wolf. A real wolf. Would you like that? I think that would be pretty cool. That is cool. It is cool. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. We're going to be continuing the tour around for the animals and we're going to go to the other stations. So we're going to head back outside. We'll see you then. Hey everyone, so we're back outside and we're here with Marcus. Now Marcus, first can you tell us what you do? Uh, I'm an officer with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission and uh, I'm on the offshore marine squad right now. Now how did you originally get partnered up? How did this area originally get partnered up with the museum? The museum? Well the museum contacted my supervisor and the supervisor contacted me and told me that it would be a good thing for the community to get out here and spread the word about what our agency does. Now what are you trying to, obviously a lot of kids are here, there's a lot of kids, so what are you trying to teach them as they come along? Well really just the basic principles of conservation and just really kind of introduce them to what we do as an agency and just introduce them to animals, different things like that, how to be a good conservationist in the future. Now how can the viewers learn more information about what you do? Uh, to learn more information about what we do you can go to our website at myfwc.com and to to, from there, you just follow the links and they'll tell you anything you want to know. All right, I hope you have a great day. All right, thank We're going to be going to the next area right next to us, which actually has snakes. So, we'll see you hey later. Hey, everyone, so now we're over here. The snakes are right there, but we're going to look at them for a sec. So, here's Jake. And, Jake, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and what organization you're with? Yep. Uh, my name is Jake Edwards. I work for the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. I'm an exotic wildlife technician. And I specialize in dealing with uh, some of the introduced species in Florida. Now, how did the organization uh, originally partner up with the museum? Well, we heard about their excellent event they're having today, and we found it would be a good opportunity to come out and talk to talk to people, especially the kids, about uh, snakes and safety with snakes, and also animals they might see in their neighborhoods. So you're trying to teach the kids that come by really about the differences between exotic and native, right? Yeah, correct. And we're trying to teach them about the. Uh, the exotic species, their impacts in the state, and also the uh, native species and the important values they play in our ecosystem. All right, now how can the viewers learn more information about the organization? Okay, um, you guys can go to www.ivegotone.org. That's I V E G O T number one.org, and you can see all sorts of information about exotic species. All right, well, thank you. And before we move on, you can get a quick shot of the snakes right there. You have a corn snake, correct? Correct, a corn snake and, and a Burmese python. All right. Well, they're really cool. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next area. All right, so we just finished up going to the different areas with the animals outside. I'm going to be heading back inside and going to the different stations, doing a little bit of B-roll, showing off the, all the cool activities that they have for the children in there. So why don't you come along with me? And we'll head inside. All right, so now we are going to be taking the tour once again. So this is one more shot of outside, the, all the different activities. I like that part that we're looking at because you get to build stuff. There's one more look at all the stations with the animals. Now we shall go inside. There's a little cafe they have, so you can go there if you ever visit. They have snacks, all that stuff there. And here's the small Everglades forest tree. There's a couple more exhibits over there, so we're going to head over there. Alligator. Again, big, big tree. They have a small model of it out front, which I'll actually show you. It's kind of acting as a little money tree. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Small activities, drawing activities for the children. So now we shall walk back around. There's the upstairs where we did the interviews. They have all their classes up there. So I think there's some activities going on up there. And again, all these activities are made for learning as well as having a lot of fun. Right now there's nobody over here, but this is kind of showing. I didn't really go too in-depth, but in this area they show how uh, plants are picked. Then they go through the process of being moved and they come out into your normal shopping mall. They have different 
climate and climate and temperature. They have igloo, they have all different winds. The world's cafe. Alright. More stations to show off. Big, big Christmas tree. Actually, hold on a sec. Over here, yep. So this is the, their money tree. And that is a replica of that one over there. And you can actually, if you get upstairs, they have different areas and you can climb up the tree and do a lot of stuff. It's actually really fun. I haven't tried it out yet, but you know, maybe. Front lobby, their main gift shop store. Their art studio. This is an area that I didn't really show too in depth. It looks like they added more stuff. Their little rocket center, like they were talking about before. Oh, now I see what they're talking about. Hoops hitting the planets. They have a rock climbing wall. And you have to remember this place is non for profit and they have a lot of people, volunteers, working. So in the art center, they can draw on the windows which is something normally nobody could really do as well as small learning activities then we come back around to the recycling plant so you could put bottles and different items up it goes around around and then drops off inside the house it's pretty cool it actually works too they have different TVs all around that show the different people that went ahead and donated so it's a really, really cool area. They're going to be adding more stuff, more areas, more for, um, I think she said, 8 to, tw 8 to 12, 8 to 14 years old. So it'll be really cool seeing that. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more stuff, more tours, more interviews. And I will we see you later. We are going to be taking a more in-depth look at what they were talking about originally with the rockets. So, they have a section where you can grab the materials, you can create your own custom rockets, which I think you can take home at the end of the day, which is pretty cool. They have small rocket air launchers over here, and then you can send them off into hoops, into planets. I can understand why a lot of people would hit the sun. It is massive. Definitely bigger than all the other planets, but it's a really cool area. This is just one of many, many advances that they're going to be going on with the museum so I'm really excited to come back in due time and see what they're having that scared me anyways thanks for watching and I'll see you hey later everyone we're here with John and Lovebug Love hi Bug. there hi there very much <laughs> <laughs> anyways so John can you tell us what you do um, well basically what I do is I uh, do animal education with uh, local schools and libraries and uh, other educational organizations uh, like the museum here that we're at today. Um, our desire is to help people understand animals better, um, uh, understand uh, how they live, how they survive in the wild, um, you know, how some of them uh, can cause problems when they're not where yeah. they belong. So, uh, so anything that has anything to do with animals, we try to help people understand them better. So is that what you're trying to teach any kids that come by, you know, trying to teach them the importance of the animals and also how they can be dangerous? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, anything that has anything to do with that animals, uh, we, you know, we teach a little bit of history, geography, geology, um, you know. But the, most of it's trying to help people understand the animals and their needs. Uh, so we talk a lot about their habitats, uh, how they survive in their habitats, uh, you know, the types of things they eat. Uh, you know, and today we're just talking about. Um, you know, reptiles in general, yeah. what makes a reptile a reptile, the difference between the different reptiles, um, you know, the, the whole cold-blooded, uh, they have scales and they lay eggs, which makes them different from other animals. Um, you know, because we focus on elementary education, some, a lot of it's just your basic things that they're learning in elementary school, but yeah. we just reinforce it with, with uh, you know, the props. <laughs> now, how did you originally partner up with the museum itself? Um, we actually got um, a call from Lily, who's the, uh, the, the director here, and um, the first time we came here was uh, uh, to bring a Florida panther. Um, you know, Florida, being in Florida, Florida panther is a very uh, important topic in the area. Um, so um, after the first meeting, it, uh, the relationship has just grown into uh, 
a lot of uh, different educational things. Uh, we try to uh, spotlight uh, certain topics in the classroom here uh, versus just uh, doing an, an exhibit outside. So, so and today, like I said, we're zoning in on reptiles. <laughs> so. Actually, Love Bug is getting very excited because he's yeah. moving all around the place. Yeah, a lot There's of it, he's uh, getting the warmth from my body, yeah. so he's uh, because he's cold blooded. He's trying to get the, the uh, heat out of my body. Yeah. And obviously, there's the other reptiles over there. Yeah, I can show them to you real quickly here. Yep. We'll go through. I'll, I'll give a uh, love bug to my assistant. <laughs> and of course, we have the, the different types of reptiles. Uh, this is a red footed tortoise, uh, which comes from South America. Um, you find them mostly in uh, Brazil and uh, Venezuela, the northern parts of uh, South America. And um, one of the things that we teach is the difference between a tortoise and a turtle. We have a couple little turtles here. Um, and the basic difference is one lives in the water and one lives on land. The tortoise lives on land and the turtle, of course, the turtle has webbed feet like a duck and the tortoise has long fingernails that help it dig. Then we have the other ones, the, uh, the reptiles. This is Tony. Tony is an Argentine tegu. Uh, which is actually an omnivore. It eats both meat and vegetables. Um, of course, they come from Argentina, self-explanatory with the name. Um, these actually can get up to five feet long, too, so they can get very big. Uh, they're also an invasive species that's starting to cause problems in Florida. Um, then down here a little bit further, we have a bearded dragon. This is uh, Mr. Lily. Um, some of these are reptiles, these lizards, like the bearded dragon and the tegus, are, are actually very social uh, uh, reptiles. Uh, so they actually seek human attention uh, if they're handled a lot. Uh, a lot of times tegus will come running up to you just like a little dog when they see you coming. Um, so uh, the bearded dragon is actually probably the most social out of all the lizards. So they, uh, they tend to um, really... Uh, enjoy being held and, and uh, the contact between people. And then of course we have, um, last but not least, probably the most unusual lizard, and that is the um, veiled chameleon, which comes from a country called Yemen in the Middle East. Uh, very unique looking animal. Of course this is the one with the eyes that uh, completely turn around so they can see almost in any direction. They also work independently, so one can be pointing one way and the other just complete opposite direction. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they have like mittens for feet, uh, good for climbing. They also change colors. Uh, that's what they're known for is uh, changing to uh, the background. Uh, a lot of it also has to do with their mood, uh, more so than actual background or, or for hiding. Um, their emotions really dictate uh, how they look. So, um, but they're a very unique uh, looking animal. <laughs> so. Finally, how can the viewers learn more information about your society, about your organization? Where can they um, go? A lot of different ways. Uh, Kawaiachobe Animal Preserve is on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the, the hardest part is spelling it, K-O-W-I-A-C-H-O-B-E-E. -E. Um, it actually is a seminal word, uh, which is the Seminole Indian tribe in Florida, South Florida. Um, the word Kawaiachobe is in reference to the Florida Panther. That's what the Seminole Indians call the Florida Panther. It uh, basically means big screaming cat or big cat. So and that's where it originates. So Facebook, uh, we have a YouTube channel. Um, you know, we have a, a website, kawaiya.com, K-O-W-I-A.com. Um, so you can check us out on any of those. So. All right. Thank you taking the time. I got poop on there. So. <laughs> thank, thank there you. you thank you. <laughs> <laughs> These animals are really, really cool, and I'm very, very excited to see more in the future. Hope you have a great time. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later. All right, everyone. So there's one more area before we leave that I really wanted to cover. I am a big fan of sharks. I love shark teeth, everything. And then I found this exhibit here. Zach here can tell us all about it. So Zach, uh, you're part of a club who have partnered up with the museum. Can you tell us about what they do? Yes, the Fossil Club of Lee County and the Southwest Club are organizations and we try to educate as many people as we can. We uh, go hunting together and basically do a bunch of science work with each other. Now for the kids that are coming by, what do you try to teach them about the shark teeth? What I've been trying to do is teach them the importance of sharks, especially 
you know, we kill so many a year, and I want them to understand that we shouldn't do that anymore. Yeah, because they're, they're becoming endangered, a lot of them are starting to. That's right. So now, um, how did you originally, how did the club originally get partnered up with the museum? Well, uh, the floor manager here asked my uh, Fossil Club president for someone to do a presentation for a camp, and I volunteered, and then I've been working with Miss Randall for a few months now, yeah. doing presentations and doing little tables like this. Now, are these teeth that are here being shown off, are they donated, or do you actually go out to different areas that you can around Florida and search for them and find them and show them off? I found most of these myself, along with my okay. father and we find them in the Peace River, the Bone Valley Formation, which is a phosphate mine, Venice Beach. Anyone can do this. You just have to go out, have a little imagination of where to look, and you'll probably find something. Well, I know what we're doing next week. Anyways, a last question. How can the viewers learn more information about the club? Uh, we have websites. You can s Google the Fossil Club of Lee County or Southwest Florida Fossil C Society. Mm -hmm. There's everything you need to know, including when the next meeting is, as, as well as pictures mm -hmm. and plenty of guides for fossil hunting. All right, I'll definitely check that out. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you have a great day. You Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next interviews and videos, and I'll see you later.